Hello Internet, Andrew Huang here again for LPX Studios, bringing you another Versus Comparison. Today's combatants are going to be the Samsung Gear VR versus the Oculus Rift DK2. Now, while both devices are virtual reality devices, they both go about it in different ways. So how today's episode is going to work is, I'm going to go over a few key topic points for both devices and then tally up who wins each one. And at the end of the episode, I'm going to tally up the scores and also take into consideration what you, the commenters, have said and give my final verdict on which device is better. Now in terms of accessibility, the Samsung Gear VR is actually technically consumer ready because now it's being sold through not only the respective cell phone stores but also Best Buy and it's available online. The Oculus Rift DK2, on the other hand, was meant to be uh, for developers. It was just It's a development kit, as the namesake stands for, uh, and so it's not quite ready for the consumer market. So on top of that, the price points pretty much reflect this in seeing that the Samsung Gear VR is $200, but while you may say that that's really expensive compared to the Oculus Rift DK2's $350 price tag is quite the value. But before you go ahead and start saying that the Gear VR wins in this round, the one main component that you need for the Gear VR to work is a Samsung Galaxy Note 4 device. Um, this is very crucial because this is essentially the display and the computing and the storage memory for the device to work. On the Oculus Rift DK2 on the other hand, um, you just require a PC based uh, system. So you can run, if it's running Windows, OS X, or Linux, you can go ahead and use uh, the Oculus Rift DK2. Now, since we're on this topic, let's go over the technical aspects of both devices. Now, for viewing angle, the Oculus Rift DK2 has a 100 degree viewing angle, so that's pretty wide. It's not quite peripheral vision yet, but it's getting close. Um, the Samsung Gear VR, on the other hand, rocks a 96 degree angle, so four degrees less. But when using both devices, it's really hard to tell. But the Oculus Rift DK2 takes that one. So how about display size? Now while both devices rock a 5.7 inch AMOLED display, the Oculus Rift DK2's resolution per eye, it's per eye piece of split images, is 960 by 1080. So it's almost 1080p quality. But when you flip over to the Gear VR, the Note 4 screen resolution split in half gets down to 1280 times 1440 per eye. So folks, that's a really awesome display. So resolution wise, the Samsung Gear VR obviously takes the cake here. And one last major technical aspect of both of these devices is the latency, which is pretty much the response time it takes for when you move your head and the screen to adjust with it. Um, in the Oculus Rift DK1, this was very prevalent because when you move your head really fast, um, there was a slight delay and motion blurness. But with both of these devices, they're at less than 20 milliseconds. So it's actually really quick. So when you're using devices, it's very seamless when you're using it. And trust me when I say this, um, I went from the DK1 to the DK2 and the Gear VR. I'm gonna tell you right now, it's like night and day. With the DK1, there was definitely, it looked very blurry. But when you looked with the DK2 and the Gear VR, it's very seamless. Now, where does, where does the software for both these devices come from? And they're both technically from Oculus because uh, this is technically running off the Oculus platform. But what about the programs? Now, Samsung has technically a limited library because they're, it's pretty much taking all the apps that were developed for the DK2 and that have been converted for the Gear VR because obviously the Note 4 does have, it has a strong processing power unit but it is quite limited compared to a PC per se. So the library is actually relatively small. I mean, don't get me wrong, there's a good handful of games out there, but when you compare it to the library that's available to the Oculus Rift DK2, there is no content. Now this is because the Oculus Rift DK2 is not only limited by the Oculus library, but because it's such an open developer community, it can pretty much run any games that are compatible with the device. And there have been a, several programs that have adapted older games like Half-Life 2, Minecraft, and Battlefield 4 to be playable on the DK2. So in program wise, there is no competition between the two because the Oculus Rift DK2 definitely takes the cake. But before you go judging on that, um, people are working on a, a, a software program to allow you to, to view your PC onto the Gear VR. There is already an app out there and I'm currently testing it out right now. It's not quite up to par there yet, but it's coming soon guys. But for now, the Oculus Rift DK2 takes this. Now let's take a look at the usability side of things. So like how easy is it to use either of these devices? 
For setup, I can tell you right now that Gear VR wins right away because it's literally taking your phone, the Gear VR, click it in, put it on, done. The Oculus Rift DK2, you got to plug in the HDMI cable, the USB for the Oculus Rift, the USB for the camera, then you have to attach the SIM cables from the camera to the Oculus Rift, then you have to attach the power cord to the Oculus Rift unit. So several steps you got to take there before you start enjoying it. Oh, and at the same time, you have to open up the relative program, get the get the background programs up, and it's a bit of a mess. So it's not quite consumer ready. So for the setup procedures, the Samsung Gear VR wins just because of the easiness of the device. How about the comfort level? Well, I can tell you this, guys, right now, the Samsung Gear VR takes it just because they've gone a little bit the extra step to add some padding to the plastic pieces and the straps to the unit, while the DK2 while it's comfortable in the facial area, in my opinion, um, it's stuck with just like those uh, snow goggle type straps and everything. So the foam padding that the Gear VR has adds a little bit extra comfort to it. So they take that point as well. How about you glass owners? All right. My fellow glass owners, which one actually fits your glasses better or which one can you wear glasses with? So technically speaking, you can wear both of them with glasses. But I can tell you this right now, the DK2 has a little bit more space in between the lens and your face, so the glasses fit easier. The Samsung Gear VR, on the other hand, um, the space is quite tight, so it doesn't really fit all that well. But you're able to focus in the image enough where you can actually use the Gear VR without your glasses. And I have negative four vision on both sides, and I can, I can say that I can comfortably use the Gear VR very well. But at the same time, for those of you who might have worse vision than I do, um, that's only about half focus. So I believe you can focus in it a lot further. So maybe up to negative eight. Um, so if you've tried it out there, please go ahead and comment down below if it actually works for, for you, if you have worse vision than me. But in terms of being able to use it with the glasses, the Oculus Rift DK2 will take this round just because it has that extra space in it. Now, another usability point is pretty much the wires. Um, the Samsung Gear VR will take this one hands down because there's no wires involved in using this unit, while the Oculus Rift DK2 has you tethered to the PC. Um, so pretty much being able to move around, look around behind you, walk around if need be, the Samsung Gear VR takes it. All right, guys, well, I'm going to go ahead and award an extra point to each device because both of them offer something that the other doesn't. First, the Oculus Rift DK2 offers positional tracking. So with the use of a motion sensing camera, you can actually go ahead and start leaning forward and back. So the actual level of control is a lot better. And trust me, the experience is just that much better because especially in the horror games, the fact that you're able to lean forward and peek through corners and stuff is huge. And trust me, the immersion is just that much better. But what about the Samsung Gear VR? What additional points other than being wireless does it have over the DK2? Well, it's actually the, the ease of use of it because not only can you um, use it with the Oculus Rift Samsung apps, but you can go ahead and use the Google Cardboard on it. Um, I already did a video on how to use the Gear VR as a Google Cardboard device. And that just means that number one, the library is just that much bigger. But number two, the ease of use in, in the mass market is just that much greater. That means anyone with a, a, a recent Android phone can go ahead and pick up a Google Cardboard unit or the Samsung Gear VR and try it out for themselves. While this, the Oculus Rift DK2 requires you to have um, a decent computer, at least to run the programs right, um, at least a working knowledge of how some of this technology works because you might run into issues of connections and stuff. So you gotta have some level of compute, computer of sassiness in order to use the DK2. So what are some final thoughts on each of these devices? Let's start off with the Oculus Rift DK2. Now the DK2 pretty much in terms of power the cell phones or the Note 4 in general cannot compare with a PC because you can make a beast of a computer and the phone will be instantly behind. Um, and that's just a fact. So, I mean, it takes, it takes it in that terms. It also beats the Gear VR in terms of the library because the amount of games and programs you can use on the Oculus Rift DK2 is just that much greater. And the fact that it has support for older games like Half-Life 2 and Battlefield 4 just, make, just makes the experience just that much more. And another point that you got to keep in mind, the Oculus Rift DK2 does not overheat. Uh, because it's just a display at the end of the day with sensors and it's, it's all determined on your PC. 
So while the Note 4 overheats after a typical 20 to 40 minutes of use, the DK2 can keep on going as long as you can keep up with it. Now the Samsung Gear VR on the other hand has many good aspects, but what are the quick bad ones I want to go over? Um, like I just said, it does overheat. Just because these cell phones, while they are, they are beastly for what they are, um, they're technically running PC graded apps in, in a cell phone, so they're gonna be overworked a little bit. But with the announcement of the Samsung S6 and hopefully in the future, the Note 5, they may address this performance issue. But the one major advantage, like I said, that the Samsung Gear VR has over the Oculus Rift DK2 is the ease of use, the portability. The fact that you only have to carry around two devices to make this thing work is very easy because for me to go ahead and show off the Oculus Rift DK2, I gotta grab a laptop or a computer and bring the unit and then have a power source ready to plug everything in and the setup time is vastly different. And the screen guys, there's a thing called screen door effect, um, pretty much because when you're looking through these devices, you're magnifying a little screen into something huge. So what, even though the pixels can be really small to the naked eye, when you're zooming in, they become prevalent. Now, even though this issue has not all but disappeared, it is significantly better. Because in my opinion, it went from something like this to something very small. So even though it's noticeable for first time users, for um, older users like me, it's gotten so much better that I don't even care about it anymore. And the fact that the Samsung um, S6 has more pixel density than the Note 4 does, that's just ridiculous. So this issue will be solved in the future, folks, most definitely. As soon as, especially when 4K displays and 8K displays on phones start being released, trust me, that is gonna be gone. And one last thought that I liked about the Samsung Gear VR is the fact that there's Samsung behind it. Now, while Oculus is working with Samsung, they're also, you know, they're owned by Facebook. So with the power, with the resources behind with Facebook and now Samsung's retail ability, I mean, this thing can go as far as possible. So the thing is, this round will go to the Samsung Gear VR for the sheer fact that it is actually moving the industry forward. Now, while this, the Oculus Rift DK1 and DK2 were the stepping stones, the, the Gear VR is truly making like a taking a leap forward to a, a truly consumer retail version. I'm also awarding this round to the Gear VR because of the overwhelming support the Gear VR actually had over the DK2 in the comments sections because at the end of the day, guys, it is really easy for everyone to use. I mean, a lot of people are able to try it out. And for those of you who want to say, well, what about the Google Cardboard? That's coming later. Uh, I'm actually going to be working on that episode soon, actually. But um, t there's no comparison on this too. But it'll be a fun, it'll be a fun, quick episode. But guys, it's it's truly a versatile unit. I know there's issues with it, but at the end of the day, this is a prototype. This is an early adopter model, like you know, like the first iPhone and like a lot of the first of any devices. There's going to be issues, but they will eventually get addressed, and they'll be a thing of the past very soon. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this quick little episode. Um, if you liked or disliked this video, please go ahead and leave a thumbs up or a thumbs down and go ahead and let me know. Um, if you have any additional questions on either device, please go ahead and leave a comment down below and I'll be more than happy to address it for you. And as always, if you aren't already a subscriber, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below for more content as well as to join the ever-growing community that we're growing here. And if I don't see you guys in the next video, thank you for stopping by. I hope you at least enjoyed this one I made. But hopefully, I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. The loofah is in my hand, still getting wet. I'm going to apply the soap now onto the loofah. Yes, the body wash soap. Here, I'll even put it on the Gear S. Oh, look at that. Oh, blasphemy. But it slides right off because the screen is so slick. Doing it, you know, now I'm, you know, making it moist to get it off bubbly. And look, look, the watch is still on. I'm watching the watch with the loop on it's still going. For the people who say, yeah, I, I know that this device isn't really meant to be truly underwater, but the fact that it is this durable, guys, this is awesome. Look, I still have it on. I'm not kidding you. I just got a text message. <laughs> not like that. Hey, look.